So thanks, Rio, for the introduction. So I'll be presenting on watermarking public key cryptographic primitives. And this is joint work with Risho Goyle, Sam Kim, Brent Waters, and David Wu. So we heard this in the previous talk, but just to quickly recap, um, when we think about watermarking programs, there are two basic algorithms. There's a mark algorithm, which takes as input a program models a circuit and some tag tau or mark, and outputs a circuit C prime that indicates the mark circuit. And then there's an extract algorithm that takes as input some circuit C prime and outputs a, either a tag or bot. So the tag would indicate that the program was marked with the tag tau or bot would indicate that the program was unmarked. Okay, and the way I've defined these algorithms, they're um, in the fully public setting, meaning that the mark and extract algorithms aren't taking any secrets, but you can also consider secret marking and extraction settings where these algorithms require secrets that are held by some trusted uh, watermarking authority. And there are two main properties that we want out of a watermarking scheme. The first is functionality preserving, which is basically saying that the uh, marked circuit should behave, preserve the functionality of the unmarked circuit. And the second is unremovability, which basically says that given a marked circuit, it should be difficult for an adversary to create another circuit that preserves the functionality of the circuit yet removes the mark. Um, and so what is known so far? Well, um, in the work of Cohen et al., they gave the first positive results for watermarking assuming indistinguishability obfuscation. And since then, the focus has been on watermarking pseudorandom functions from standard assumptions. And there have been a series of works by um, Kim and Wu, Quash, Wix, and Zerdelis, and then Kim and Wu again, the, the previous talk. And basically, um, the focus so far has been on watermarking secret key primitives. Um, and basically, secret key primitives were already quite challenging to watermark. And since they have uh, less structure and are less complex than public key primitives, it was just assumed that public key primitives would be much more or more challenging to watermark than secret key primitives. And this hasn't been adequately studied. Um, so in this work, we ask, can we watermark public key primitives? And um, in particular, the, the public key primitives we, we watermark in this work are digital signatures, uh, in particular the, the signing functionality of a digital signature scheme, and public key attribute based or predicate encryption, um, in particular the decryption functionality. Okay, so what was known prior to our work? Um, well, in the work of Cohen, all they did show, um, assuming indistinguishability obfuscation, how to um, build watermarkable signatures and public key encryption. Um, so a natural question for our work is, can we watermark these public key primitives from standard assumptions? And in this work, we show the answer is yes. And in fact, we can do this um, surprisingly simply. Um, so, our, so our main contributions are watermarking constructions. Um, we give watermarkable signatures and watermarkable um, attribute-based and predicate encryption. But our other contribution comes on the definitional side. Um, Basically, the existing definitions in the literature had some insufficiencies and issues, um, which we address in this work and give what we believe are um, appropriate definitions for watermarking these primitives. Um, and just to quickly state what some of these issues are, um, uh, as defined in the literature, the keygen and mark algorithms were paired, um, collusion resistance was not handled, and uh, the unremovability notion ruled out um, Valid attacks. This is the most. This is the most devastating of the the issues with the definitions currently in the literature. Um, and now I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail about the definitional issues. So, for right now, I'm just going to focus on the uh, signatures aspect uh, of the definitions. So, um, as defined in Cohen et al., the um, there was a mark gen algorithm. The, so the key gen and mark algorithms were paired. So there was a mark gen algorithm that took as input a tag tau um, and now put it a verification key signing key tuple where the signing key is, is marked with a tag tau. And the issue with this definition is, first of all, there's no notion of an unmarked signing key, right? The signing key is generated when, it's, when this algorithm is given a tag tau. So um, in this diagram, there's only, there's only a marked signing key. Um, and the other issue with this is that collusion resistance is not, um, not defined, right? Because the signing key is only generated when given a tag, um, it isn't possible to generate uh, many marked versions of the same signing key with different tags. OK, so this is not that big an issue. It's not, not very difficult to fix. Um, 
we simply separate these algorithms, right? So we, they, we have a key, separate key gen algorithm and a mark algorithm. So our key gen algorithm is first gonna generate a verification signing key pair. And then the mark al algorithm will take as input um, the signing key and a tag tau and I'll put um, a mark circuit C sub tau that inputs this mark signing key functionality. I um, mean, this new formulation of the definition, as you can see, there's, there's an unmarked signing key now, right? The, the initial signing key output um, by the keygen algorithm. And also, it is easy to generate many marked versions of the same signing key, right? Because you can simply run the mark algorithm with the same signing key and many different tags. Okay. Now I'm gonna go into the issue with the um, unremovability definition. Um, and so to do this, I have to describe the game in a little bit of detail. So the way the unremovability game is captured in watermarking is there's a game between an adversary and a challenger. Um, and what happens is the adversary picks some tag uh, tau and sends it to the challenger and is given back um, a circuit that implements a marked signing key um, that is marked with this tag. And then the adversary's goal is to output some circuit C star. And what are the conditions required by the adversary? Um, well, so we're required that the adversary circuit agrees with the mark circuit on an epsilon fraction of inputs. Just think of epsilon as some one by poly more than uh, one half, so just like some majority fraction of inputs. And the other property, or, or the adversary wins the game basically, if the circuit output by the adversary um, is not considered to be marked with the tag tau. So the adversary has succeeded in removing the mark, but has preserved the functionality um, on some fraction of inputs. And at first glance, um, this definition seems completely reasonable, and this is, this is the definition given in Cohen et al. But um, there are some issues with this definition, and to illustrate this, um, just to give a quick example. So, so just suppose the mark circuit was of the following form. Um, suppose C sub tau of x simply outputted the tag tau in the clear, and then outputted a signature on x. And the, the tag tau and the signature are completely independent. So from a watermarking perspective, this thing should be considered completely broken. Okay, why is that? Well, there's a trivial adversarial unmovability strategy, which is to simply take this mark circuit and restrict it to only output the second tuple, right? So it only outputs the signature now, and the tag is nowhere to be found. And this can easily be done. And now um, the adversary has uh, succeeded in um, removing the tag, but the functionality has been completely preserved, right? This adversary's unmarked circuit output signatures everywhere. Okay. Um, now, now, what is the problem with the unremovability definition? Well, observe as stated, the adversary is required to output a circuit that agrees with the marked circuit exactly, in the input-output behavior must be preserved exactly on a majority of inputs, and in particular, that rules out this attack strategy, right? Because this unmarked circuit, this attack, uh, this unmarked circuit stated down there does not output the tag on any input. So this attack would not be admissible in the security game, and therefore under this security definition, um, this broken scheme would be considered provably secure under this unremovability definition. So how do we fix this issue? Um, well, the offending line is basically the fact that this, uh, the functionality must be preserved exactly, the exact input-output behavior. Um, but like, what is, what is the functionality of a signature scheme really? Um, it's not necessarily the input-output behavior is exactly preserved, rather the adversary circuit is useful if it can output a signature that verifies. So in our definition, we change the condition on the adversary to simply say that the adversary circuit outputs signatures that verify on say a majority of inputs and the adversary's win condition remains, remains the same. Okay, so now, okay, I've put our definition on the left. Now let's see why, why does this fix the problem? Well, in this example before, the adversary's unmarked circuit still outputs signatures. So the adversary's um, circuit will still verify everywhere with respect to the verification algorithm, yet the tag is nowhere to be found and the circuit will be considered unmarked. Okay. So now that I've dealt with, um, yeah, so now the broken scheme is considered to be broken uh, properly under this definition. So, uh, so furthermore, we can handle um, unruly also with, with this notion of collusion resistance where the adversary is now allowed to make 
an unbounded polynomial number of queries to a marking oracle and receive back the same mark signing key marked with many different tags. And the adversary's win condition is now just modified to say the adversary wins if the extract algorithm doesn't output any of the tags that, for which it has been given a mark signing key. OK, so now that I've talked about the, um, one of the main properties, let's talk about the other one, functionality preserving. So a natural definition for functionality preserving would basically be that the mark circuit should equal the unmarked signing algorithm almost everywhere. The input-output behavior should be exactly preserved. Um, but that leads us to the natural question, like, what is functionality preserving for signatures, right? Is it really that the input-output behavior is exactly preserved, or is, it, or is it that the signature actually verifies, right? Um, to try to illustrate this, um, suppose you have some like, official document that you want to get approved. All you care about is that this document has been approved, right? You don't care exactly what the approval stamp on the document looks like. And so in this spirit, um, uh, in, in this work, our functionality preserving definition says that the mark circuit is only required to output signatures that verify with respect to the verification algorithm everywhere. It doesn't have to preserve the input-output behavior exactly and output the same string. OK, so now I've described how we define watermarking signatures in this work. I'm going to go into the construction. So, so what do we achieve? Um, we achieve a watermarkable signature scheme that is, um, from minimal assumptions, just the existence of signatures. Um, and it is a fully public scheme. There's no reliance on any trusted watermarking authority. Um, and all the prior work um, in the PRF constructions all required a trusted watermarking authority for either secret marking and or extraction. This is the first fully public scheme. Um, moreover, we obtain full collusion resistance, meaning that in the security game, the adversary can see the signing key marked with as many um, different tags of its choice. And all the previous constructions were not at all collusion resistant, all the PRF constructions um, and the IO constructions, meaning that even if the adversary saw the same signing key marked with two different tags, uh, the, the scheme would be broken. So we've gone from um, basically no collusion resistance to full collusion resistance here. OK, so how do we actually construct this? The construction is, is surprisingly simple and follows from standard signature techniques. So the, the unmarked circuit is just a simple signing algorithm. It, on, it, on a message M, it just simply outputs a signature. OK. Now, how does the mark algorithm work? Well, to mark with a tag tau, what first happens is you generate a new verification key signing key pair. And once that's, once that's done, the mark key is this new verification signing key pair, along with the tag and the certificate signature under the original signing key of this verification key tag pair. OK, now how do you sign, how do you sign with this marked key? Well, you output this new verification key in the tag in the clear, along with this certificate signature, and then you sign the message M with the new signing key SK prime. OK. Now, why does this work? So how do you verify? Um, to verify signatures from the um, unmarked signing key, you simply run the verification algorithm. And to verify signatures um, signed by the marked key, you do a two-step verification process, where you first verify that the certificate signature um, is indeed a valid signature on um, this, this new verification key in the tag tau. And then once that's done, you also check that this signature on the message M verifies with respect to the new signing key SK prime. And if both checks pass, you say that the signature verifies. OK. Now, how would you extract, or, oh, sorry, um, observe here that the mark circuit outputs different signatures, clearly different signatures than the unmarked circuit here, but both verify with respect to the verification procedure. OK. So now how would you extract? Well, the extraction procedure is very simple. You can simply just find tau in a valid signature. That is, you sample random messages, see what the circuit outputs, and if a signature verifies um, in a marked circuit, the signature will be of, of the signatures of the form of the marked signature, and you can just take tau straight from, straight from the signature. OK, and, and why does unremovability follow? Well, if you look at the marked key, there's no information about the signing key in there except a signature on this verification key tag pair. So in particular, 
um, for an adversary to sign, uh, produce a signature by the unmarked algorithm, it would have to produce a forgery, or to produce a signature by the marked algorithm, it would also have to produce a forgery on, this, on a different certificate um, of VK prime and, and tau, which it can't do. So in particular, the only kind of signatures it can output are signatures of the marked form where the tag tau is in the clear, and it can be extracted. Okay. And just, just note that the extract algorithm in our construction does need to know the verification key in order to extract. However, this is assumed to be public, so this is not that big of a deal. Okay, and I don't have a lot of time to talk about our second construction, but just briefly, we, um, I'm just going to say, so the other construction is um, on watermarking the decryption functionality of a public key predicate or attribute-based encryption scheme. And so what are our main results here? Well, we obtain secret marking and extraction fully collusion-resistant at watermarkable attribute-based encryption. And we obtain fully public bounded collusion-resistant watermarkable predicate encryption. Um, and the way we do this um, is using techniques that's conceptually similar to the notion of attribute-based trader tracing. Um, and another property of, of this construction is we um, achieve stronger unremovability guarantees. In particular, our, unre our unremovability guarantee is of a distinguished instead of a decryption flavor, like in trader tracing. And what I mean by that is that um, the adversaries, the adversary, even an adversary that outputs um, a circuit that is only good at decrypting two, um, two different messages encrypted under the same attribute, it can only distinguish between two types of ciphertext um, against, uh, against an adversary that outputs a circuit that's only good at, at distinguishing between two different types of encryptions, we can still recover the tag. So it doesn't need to be a good decryptor for basically almost anything. It just has to be able to, a good distinguisher between two types of encryptions, and we can still recover the tag. OK, and just, um, just to go in a little more detail on our construction of collusion-resistant watermarkable ABE. Um, so to just provide some intuition, we observe some parallels between uh, trader tracing and watermarkable encryption. So for those not familiar, um, a trader tracing scheme is basically some public key encryption scheme where um, you can give out different secret keys to different users with the property that if some subset of users collude and create some like pirate decryption algorithm together, there exists some trace algorithm that can um, recover from this pirate dec uh, decryptor one of the users that colluded to, to construct it. And this should intuitively seem similar to, to this notion of watermarkable um, encryption in the sense that like these marked keys kind of are like user decryption keys, right? Because the adversary is saying, seeing many marked keys and then um, combines all these marked keys to try to come up with some, some like pirate circuit, sort of, right? Some circuit where the mark has been removed, right? And an extraction should be sort of thought of as tracing, right? Even given this pirate decoder or given this circuit um, that has been constructed by the adversary, you should still be able to extract or trace um, to recover the mark or like one of the users in the colluding set. Um, so this, hopefully there's this just some intuition as to how we might be able to, to achieve this using techniques from trader tracing. Um, and basically, we were able to do this using tools recently developed in the trader tracing literature, um, in particular the notion of um, mixed functional encryption introduced by Go Goyal, Coppola, and Waters. And of course, we needed um, attribute-based encryption. OK. So what are the main takeaways from our work? Well, we, we gave simple constructions of watermarking for public key primitives, right? We showed from one-way functions or signatures how to get watermarkable signatures, and we showed using mixed functional encryption and attribute-based encryption how to get watermarkable um, ABE or predicate encryption. And the other takeaway is that we strengthened definitions of watermarking um, and gave what we believe are appropriate definitions for, for watermarking these primitives. Okay. Um, and so this work leads to some natural open questions. Um, are there other ways to watermark other different, different cryptographic primitives simply from standard assumptions, right? In this work, we showed that even, public, even though public key primitives um, are more complex, seem more complex than secret key primitives, they can actually be watermarked quite simply. And maybe this holds for other cryptographic primitives for which watermarking has not been studied. 
Um, another natural open question is, can we obtain fully collusion resistant, fully public watermarkable ABE? Um, recall in order to get this full collusion resistance, we required um, secret marking and extraction. Uh, and, the, and the final open question I have is, um, are there better or new definitions for watermarking, right? Because what our work shows sort of is that getting definitions for watermarking um, can be quite tricky and it's often tailored to the exact functionality that you want to watermark. Um, so this is definitely a direction for future study. Thank you. If you have a question, please come to the microphone. I have two questions. Okay. Uh, one is, is there any particular applications of collision resistant watermarkable signatures? I mean, so mm. for watermark public key encryption is uh, uh, almost the same as trader tracing, right? Right, it's, it's conceptually related to trader tracing, yes. So, so for signature case, uh, is there any application of uh, collision resistant uh, watermarkable signature? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, you, you might want to like, right? You might want to watermark your signature with different tags and give, be able to give them out to different users, right? Be able to put in names if, um, to different users and then have the property that like th these users cannot, right? Like this seems like a reasonable thing you might want to do, right? Um, this seems related to like group signatures or something. Okay. Yeah. So the second one is uh, so you uh, said that cheap the collision resistant watermarker AB, right? So collision resistant means, uh, uh, I think there are two aspects. I mean, collision resistant ABE or collision resistant watermarking. Which one do you report? Yeah, yeah. so we, we get collision resistant watermarking. Okay, right? okay. The, the watermarker is able to get the decryption circuit marked with unbounded polynomial number of tags. So it means uh, as an ABE, it's not uh, collision, free collision resistant or no, free no, collision? No, we from collision resistant ABE, but but bound inclusion resistant mixed FE. Okay. Yeah. I see. More questions? Okay. Let's thank those speakers again.